Hello everyone, let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. In this problem, we have to count the number of subarrays whose sum is divisible by k. For example, if we take a look at this subarray with only 5, its sum is divisible by 5. Similarly, if we consider a subarray with only 0, its sum is also divisible by 5. And when we consider both of these together, their sum is also divisible by 5. And finally, when we consider a subarray with all these numbers, the sum would be 10 and it is divisible by 5. So we can find 4 subarrays whose sum is divisible by 5. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Let's consider this example where the red subarray is not divisible by k and the green subarray is divisible by k. Let's label these subarray sums as a and b respectively. Since the red part is not completely divisible by k, let's assume its remainder to be x. Let's use another variable s to denote the sum of these two parts. So we can write this equation as since the red part leaves a remainder of x when divided by k, we could also write it as and since the green part is completely divisible by k, we could write it as a multiple of k. So when we rearrange this equation, we see that the sum must also leave a remainder of x when divided by k. What it means is that if we have a subarray which starts from the beginning and has a remainder of x and if we have another bigger subarray which also starts from the beginning and has a remainder of x then the subarray that lies between them must be divisible by k. Let's understand this with the help of an example. For example when we start noting down the remainders of the prefix sum when divided by k we see that we have already encountered this remainder one before so the subarray of 2 and 3 must be divisible by 5. We could also prove this by finding the difference between these two parts. For example, we could represent the prefix sums like this. And when we take the difference of these two, we see that the result is a multiple of 5. So it means that this subarray has to be a multiple of 5. Similarly, when we calculate the remainder of the next prefix sum, we see that we have already encountered this before. So this subarray has to be a multiple of 5. Now let's see what happens when we encounter the same remainder again. In this case we see that we have two occurrences of the same remainder before. So it means that we can have two different subarrays ending at our current number which is divisible by 5. So to solve this we have to track how many times we have seen a particular remainder before. And if we encounter the same remainder again, the number of subarrays ending at our current number which will be divisible by k will be equal to the number of previous occurrences of the same remainder. So we'll use a hash map to count the occurrence of each remainder. This one corner case that we have to handle is when we encounter a prefix sum remainder of 0. As you can see this subarray is divisible by k but there is no prior entry of the remainder 0 to count this subarray. To handle this specific scenario we could consider that our array starts from 0 and corresponding to that we have an entry in the hash map for remainder 0. The time complexity of this would be O of n because we only have to go through the array once and the space complexity would be O of k because we can only have at most k remainders and we'll store an entry for each of them in the hash map. Let's implement our solution. Let's keep a hash map to store the count of each remainder. We'll use a default dictionary to avoid checking if the remainder exists in the hash map. To handle the corner case, we'll put an entry in the hash map for the remainder 0 with a count of 1. We'll also keep a variable to track the prefix sum and we'll initialize it to 0. And let's keep a variable for a result and initialize it to 0. Now we'll go through all the numbers in the array. We'll add our current value to the prefix sum. Let's keep a variable to store the remainder of this prefix sum when divided by k. And now if we have seen this remainder before, We'll increment the result by the count of the previous occurrences of this remainder. And finally, we'll increment the count of this remainder by 1. And once we are done with all the numbers in the array, we can return our answer. We are done with our solution. There's another similar problem that I've solved in the past, continuous subarray sum. I'll recommend you to check that out. If you thought this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content. Thanks for watching.